Kroger Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony Transcribed. K is for Kroger. C is for Cut. B is for Beef. KCB means Kroger Cut Beef. And Kroger Cut Beef means more meat for your money. It's a fact, ladies. And here's the reason Kroger Cut Beef gives you more meat, less waste. Before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. Yes, that's before the meat is weighed and priced. So you can see that means more meat for your money. You get top U.S. government grades of beef. Meat that's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. You get a better value in top grade beef. For example, when you buy a Kroger cut porterhouse steak, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes the long stringy end and excess waste before the steak is weighed and priced. You don't pay steak price for stringy meat and excess waste. Remember, whether you buy a steak or roast, you receive more meat, less waste. But see for yourself. Visit your neighborhood Kroger store and get Kroger cut beef and get more meat for your money. And now, hearts in harmony. Jed Billings, Penny Gibbs' stepfather, has come home ill and in a wheelchair. Freddie Lang, who usually takes everything lightly, is shocked by the sight of Jed. As he comes down from Jed's bedroom... Is that you, Freddie? Yeah, Gibbsy, it's me. Oh, Jed looks fine, doesn't he? Well, a guy in a wheelchair never looks too good, Gibbsy. I I saw it, but I'm still telling you I don't believe it. Yeah, but he does look well, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, sure. He looks in the pink. But look, Gibbsy, a guy in the pink don't have to push himself around in no two-wheel cart. Oh, I know it's upsetting to see him the way he is. It doesn't make a guy feel any too good. What's the matter with him, Gibbsy? How come his legs won't work? Nobody knows, Freddie. Well, the docs know, don't they? No, they don't have any idea what happened. Neither does Jed. Jed says that he woke up one morning and discovered his legs wouldn't move. Holy mackerel. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Well, does anything hurt him? No. No, he says he has no pain. (laughs) Crazy, isn't it? Really one for the book. Legs just up and quit work and bingo. Just like that. Well, maybe just like that, they'll be all right again, too. I sure hope so. You know, I guess I never showed Mr. B much respect when he was up and walking around, but I I sure did like him, Gibbsy, and I I sure hate to see this happening to him. I wish there was something I could do. Freddy, there's nothing any of us can do. I don't know about that. I might help by getting out of the way. What do you mean, getting out of the way? Well, I mean checking out of here, Gibbsy. You've got enough to do now with your mother home again, and Mr. B is all laid up. Now, maybe I'd better move out to the farm with old man Williams. Oh, Freddie, I... no, that isn't necessary. No? No. Well, it'll give you one less guy to worry about. Look, I don't worry about you anymore, Freddie. It's nice to have you around. It's a help. Look, you're really the only man in the house, you know. Oh, I'm a man in your book now, huh? <laughs> You're the man of the house in the way. No, I'm not, Gibbsy. I'm just a boarder, a hanger-on, or somebody to feed and clean up after. Now, I think I better check out. Well, you can if you want to, Freddy. Nothing's holding you here. But I enjoy having you here, and I want you to stay. Oh. Well... Maybe you need the dough I've been paying, Freddie huh? Lang, no, it's not that. You don't pay enough to make any difference, and that isn't a complaint. I wouldn't want you to pay more, Freddie. I wouldn't let you. It's just that... Well, you're kind of part of the family now, Freddie. It wouldn't be the same without you around here. It sure wouldn't. It'd be a whole lot different. A lot more peaceful, maybe. Look, you used to be a worry and a lot of trouble, but you aren't now. Believe me when I say I want you to stay, Freddie. I have reasons. Yeah? What reasons? Well, I want you to stay, that's all. It's a big house. There's plenty of room. But even Mother and Jed's being here doesn't fill it up. There's still that room in the back next to the nursery. Yeah, this house is a small size hotel, isn't it? <laughs> it huh? is a big house. <laughs> and it'll be awfully empty without you. Well, now, I don't know whether to like that crack or not. Oh, Freddie, it's meant as a compliment. It's an invitation to stay. Freddie, hmm? with Jed here unable to get around by himself... You may be a lot more important than you ever were before in this household. Oh. Well, golly, Gibbsy, I... I don't know what to say. Oh, don't say anything, Freddy, except that you will stay. Oh, sure, sure, I'll stay all right. In fact, you got me wanting to stay, and... 
Man, that you got me realizing something that I never realized before. What's that? You mind if I sit down and sort of get personal? <laughs> no, come on. Thanks. Well, what do you realize that you never realized before? Well, it's kind of hard to say, Gibbsy. I, I never was much good at talking and saying what I mean and all that, but... Well, you know what made me such a heel when I first came to Rossville? You'd had a hard time of it, Freddy. Oh, it wasn't too tough, really. What made me the rat that I was was that I didn't belong any place, Gibbsy, and I resented it. I, I was always outside looking in, and somebody was always coming along and telling me to get moving. I, I didn't belong anywhere. I, even on the outside looking in. And now? Well, now it's different. You remember when I told you I was very much in love with you, Gibbsy? Yes, Freddie, I remember that. I'll never forget that, Freddie. I was very flattered. No, you weren't. You were really annoyed. And I don't blame you either. I, I had no right to be in love with you, Gibbsy. And, and to tell you the truth, now I realize that I wasn't in love with you at all. It was just that I I was just grateful. Freddie, I wanted to help you. You don't have to be grateful to me. Yes, I do, Gibbsy. You did plenty for me. You accepted me. Yeah. Guy's lucky when he belongs someplace. Because when he doesn't, it's like not having anybody to talk to. It's, well, I don't mean just somebody to pass the time of day with, you know that, but to talk to about the things that you're thinking and, and don't want to keep down inside. No place to go to either. No home base. No place to come back to when you've gone out and got hurt or tired or even just plain disgusted. Well, I've never known what that's like, Freddy, but... I can imagine that it's a lonely existence. It isn't the loneliness that gets you, Gibbsy. It, it, it's not owning anything but yourself. Not being anything but just a guy with two arms and legs, body and head and all that. It, it, it's not belonging anywhere or to anything or anyone that gets you. But you changed all that, Gibbsy. <laughs> you made me feel as if I belonged. And I do now. I'm just beginning to believe oh, that. Oh, Freddy, you do belong. You've belonged for a long time. And you belong here in this house, Freddy. You're part of a family. Oh, adopted, huh? <laughs> no. No, you're even better than that. You've made a place for yourself in this house, Freddy. And in the town. And there'd be a big empty space if you were to leave either one of them. Really, I wouldn't be the only one who would miss you. Oh, well, that'd be enough for me, Gibbsy, just having you miss No, but me. you know that a great many people would miss you, Freddie. Mother and Jed and Johnny and the professor and Mr. Williams. And, um, Nora, to name just a few. Nora, huh? Mm -hmm. Say, there's the number one dame in this world, Gibbsy, if you don't mind me being honest about it. I hope she is number one with you, Freddie. You're number one with her. Yeah? Yeah. Well, what makes you think so? Oh, she as much as told me so. Hey, now, now that's okay, <laughs> ain't it? <laughs> oh, hello, Mother Coy. Oh, hi, Mrs. Billings. Say, hello. I hope I didn't stay in Mr. B's room too long. Oh, I don't think you stayed long enough, Freddy. He was sorry to see you leave. Yeah? Say, I'm getting real popular around here, ain't I? <laughs> you made him feel much better. He'd had a bad night, and you cheered him up. I'll be glad to do that any time at all, Mrs. B. How is he this morning, darling? Well, he's better with than he was when he woke up this morning, Penny. I think Freddy's the reason. Freddy made him laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess he couldn't help it. I say some awful dumb things without meaning to. <laughs> no, no. Is Jed resting now, Mother? Yes, I think so. He wanted to be brought downstairs, but I told him he'd have to sleep a little first. Um, Penny, do we have any beef broth in the house? Mm, yes, we do. Nora saved it from yesterday. Uh, we had an idea that Jed might like it. Well, I think I'll make him a little. Where is it? No, well, I'll, I'll do it, Mother. I'll have to fix the baby's lunch anyway. Oh. Freddy! Hmm? See that Mother relaxes for a little while, will you? I'll make her take it easy if I have to strap her down into the chair. Oh, why, I'm all right, Freddy. Well, you may be all right, but you're looking tired, Mrs. B. Yeah, these have been rather trying days. I slept well last night. Maybe too well. Oh, it was a great night for shut-eye, I'll tell you that. I sure hate to get up and go to work this morning. Oh, how is everything at the farm, Freddy? Oh, it's great. Say, we made a profit last month. Not enough to retire on or to brag about, but at least it was a profit just the same. The first month? Mm -hmm. Why, that's wonderful. Some businesses have to go a long time before they get out of the red. Yeah, I know. I guess we were just lucky. Mm -hmm. Say, Mrs. B., yeah. uh, just how sick is your husband? We we don't know, Freddy. But the doctors say he'll never get out of his wheelchair. 
Oh, well, that's a lot of baloney. Now, how are they going to keep him in that two-wheel jalopy if he wants to get out of it? Are they going to tie him down into it? Well, he wants to get out of it now, Freddy, but he can't. He has no control over his legs. Yeah, I, I know about that, but look, I, I've heard of things like this before. Guys getting hurt in an accident or falling or knocking themselves silly, then trying to get up and not being able to move. But, well, after a while, they were up dancing jigs and, and jitterbugging. Well, and... we... We all hope Dad will be well and up again very soon. Oh, sure. He will, too. You just wait and oh, see. Uh, that's the doorbell, Penny. Do you want me to answer it, dear? Yes, please, Mother. E- excuse me, Freddie. Oh, sure. Good morning, Mrs. Billings. Why, Dr. Bryan, come in. Thank you. Well, how's the patient this morning? Uh, sleeping, I hope. Uh, you got the reports from the doctors in Mapleton? Yes, I did this morning. Uh-huh. That's why I've come to see you. Will you have some news? Yes, I do. Oh, just a minute. Penny! Penny, it's Dr. Ryan. Well, I'll be right out, Mother. Uh, Freddy! Huh? Will you come wash the things on the stove for me? Oh, sure, Kipsy. I'd be glad to. Just as long as I don't have to wear an apron. <laughs> no, I don't think you have to when you wash things on the stove. But don't let anything boil over, Freddy. Okay. Hello, Dr. Ryan. Good morning, Penny. My, you're looking lovelier every day. <laughs> you don't see me every day, I'm happy to say. <laughs> Successfully keeping the doctor away, are you? I am doing my best. <laughs> oh, a Penny, Dr. Ryan has some news about Jed. Oh, Mother, that's wonderful. Yes, I have news. I received the reports from Jed's doctors in Mapleton this morning, and uh-huh. I've studied them rather carefully. Well, uh, do you find anything that points to the trouble, Dr. Ryan? Yes, I do, Mrs. Billings, but I don't want to make any direct diagnosis without examining him myself. Well, um... Can you tell the cause of the illness? No, I... I can't. Any more than the doctors on the scene could tell. That's the baffling thing about the case, according to the reports. It baffled the doctors in Mableton, and it baffles me. Well, uh, if you find the cause, you... Will you be able to cure him? A doctor never guarantees a cure when he's dealing with the unknown, Mrs. Billings. And there's a great deal of the unknown involved in Jed's... sickness... Well, call it a sickness. Look, um, Dr. Ryan, I don't know very much about these things, but, uh, what, what, what do you mean when you say you, you can only call it a sickness? Well, I mean, well, there's nothing visibly wrong with him. Not a thing. Well, then, why, why is he the way he is? I don't know, Mrs. Billings. I may never know. But, Dr. Ryan, what about his getting well? There's a chance of that, isn't there? I don't know, Penny. Maybe it's cruel to say, but I must tell you the truth. The way things look now, you'll never walk again. Is Jed Billings to be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. K-C-B. K-C-B. KCB means Kroger cut beef, and Kroger cut beef means more meat for your money. Yes, Kroger cut beef gives you more meat, less waste. Because before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. In buying Kroger cut rib roast, for example, you don't pay rib roast price for excess bone and waste. The chine bone is trimmed, the waste and short rib end removed giving you top U.S. government grades of beef that's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. And before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, waste, and stringy end. Remember, whether you buy a steak or roast, Kroger cut beef gives you more meat for your money. But mind you, you can get Kroger cut beef only at your neighborhood Kroger store, so go there as soon as you can. Step up to the meat counter and ask the Kroger meat man for Kroger cut beef. You'll get delicious and juicy and tender beef. And you'll get more meat, less waste. That means you get more meat for your money at your Kroger store. Listen in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for another thrilling transcribed chapter of Hearts in Harmony. <laughs> 